Hey everybody, Chris Serino here with the Sultana Education Foundation's virtual classroom. I'm here on a gorgeous spring day here in Chestertown, Maryland, and right behind me is a reproduction of the 1768 schooner Sultana. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how sailors in the 18th century figured out the depth of the water. So you might be asking, why would you need to know that? Well, one thing you can't see when you look at this boat is that in fact, the vessel protrudes about eight and a half feet below the water line. So in order for Sultana to be able to float, we need that water depth to be at least nine feet deep. If it's less than that, we're gonna get stuck. If it's a muddy bottom, if it's a rocky bottom and it's less than that, well, that could puncture holes in the boat and make us sink. So we wanna know the depth at all times. How did they do that? Let's go check it out. So to determine the depth of the water, sailors used a tool called a lead line. And basically that's what it is. It's a lead weight that looks like this. Sometimes they were bigger and that would be a, called a deep sea lead or a dipsy. All right, and then it was attached to a line. They would throw this over the boat, the side of the boat, generally at the bow. And every six feet, they would have a mark. And a nautical unit that measures six feet is known as a fathom. So here's the two fathom mark and you can see there's two leather strips. Why did they use fathoms? Well, if I didn't have marks in the line, the average wingspan of a sailor, as you can see here, is six feet. So if I didn't have marks in the line, a sailor could throw this overboard and simply walk out fathoms by outstretching his arms. One other thing you'll see on this lead weight is there's a depression here in the bottom. And before they threw this overboard, they would put a sticky material in there, wax or perhaps tallow. And when this hit the bottom, in addition to getting the depth, it would also take a bottom sample. And I'll talk about why that's important in a moment. Okay, so after these sailors would heave the lead, they would wait till the line was straight up and down and pull it in. And as they pulled it in, they would count the number of fathoms that they witnessed as they pulled that up. So there's one fathom two fathoms, three fathoms. So here the depth is at least three fathoms and they would also check the bottom to see if there was a bottom grab. And we didn't put anything in there, but I know the bottom here is like fine oozy mud. And we'll talk about why that's important when we take a look at the chart. So if I need the water to be at least eight and a half feet deep here, and it's over three fathoms, I know I have plenty of water to be floating right here, at least right where I am here in Chestertown right now. So once sailors used that lead line to determine the depth and the bottom type, it not only was helpful to making sure you didn't run aground to get stuck or sink, you could also use that information to help you locate where you are. So here's a 1776 nautical chart of the Chesapeake Bay. And all along the length of the bay's main channel here, you could see these numbers and those represent the depths in fathoms. So here's the number seven, for example. Well, you could either say that's seven fathoms or you can multiply by six and say that's 42 feet. But there are also areas down here where they have depths and bottom descriptions. Now, if I can match up the depth and a bottom description, like right here, it says fine sand and shells. Right here, it says fine oozy sand. As I'm coming into the bay, we'd be doing this lead line activity over and over again, and I can match up the depths and the bottom types. That can help me get a fix on my location. Okay, so to wrap this up, in the 18th century, sailors used a lead line to determine the depth of the water. A lead line is essentially a lead weight attached to a line. They'd have a mark every six feet or one fathom. The reason the depth was really important to know is because it allowed you to not get stuck and not sink the boat. Also, when you combined your depth with a bottom sample, you could match that up to information on a nautical chart to help zero in on your location. That's all for today's edition of Sultana Education Foundation's Virtual Classroom. I hope you'll join us for more cool videos.